Come on, bless the name of the Lord in this place. Oh, my God. My God, my God. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. I said bless the name of the Lord in this place. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ah, oh, my God. We're going. Ooh, Jesus. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is what we're going to do. I, I have to obey God, and wherever we end up is where we're going to end up because this, this, this service has been, this service has been a service like none other. I, I, my, I'm so full on today. What I need you to do, what I need you to do, what I need you to do, get something you can write on. If you got your cell phone, if you got your, your, uh, your iPad, get something you can write on. Get something you can write on. I'm going to just obey God, and we're going we gonna to keep going. We're going to keep going. Get something you can write on. I need everybody to get something you can write on. You got your cell phone. You got your notepad. You got your iPad. Get something that you can write on. Yes, Lord. This is, this is, this is the utterance of the Holy Ghost. This is the utterance of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're, we're, we're going to another level right now. I, I feel a shift right now. Yes, Lord. Get something you can write on. And what you're writing down, what you're writing down is that vision that God gave you. Write down that thing that you've been praying for. Write down whatever it is that God promised and you've been waiting on him to perform. Write it down right now. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down, write it down. That thing that's been hurting you, whatever it is, whatever you need to write down, I need you to write it down right now. And we're getting ready to go before the Lord in prayer. We're getting ready to go before the Lord in prayer. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're getting ready to go before the Lord in prayer. Are y'all ready? Y'all ready? I need everybody standing to your feet. Stand to your feet now. Stand to your feet now. Stand to your feet now. Yes, Lord, for the spirit of the Lord is in this place. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I, 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 yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The spirit of the Lord is upon me and I feel a different type of, of anointing. So we're getting ready to pray right now for that thing that you're writing down. I need you to hold it up. I need you to hold it up now. Hold it up now. Hold it up now. Hold it up now. When you got it, hold it up. Hold it up. Yes, Lord. 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 Father, we thank you. Come on, we all going to pray together. First, we want to adore him first, and then we're going to ask, are you ready? Are y'all ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now, God, thanking you for this time, God. Father, we love you, God. Father, we say that you're worthy, God. We say, God, that you are able, God. We say, God, you are the God that never fails, God. We say, God, that you are the God that has kept us, God. We say you are the God that is the mighty God. You're holy, God. You deserve the glory, God. So, God, now we give you the glory. Glory, God. Come on, lift him up. We give you the glory, God. We shout hallelujah now, God. We say, God, that we love you, God. We say our hearts are yours, God. We say our minds are yours, God. We adore you, God, because your blood never fails, God. We adore you, God, because you have always provided, God. We adore you, God, because you always kept us. We adore you, God, because you've always loved us, God. We adore you, God, because you sent your son, God, to die for us God we adore you God because we know God that if it had not been for you God we would be somewhere else God father you said in your word the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof God so God now even in the earth God we lift you up God we give you glory come on don't die out I need you to keep praying we give you glory God we give you honor God we give you praise God you are El Shaddai you are Jehovah Jireh you are Hosanna. You are the God that always sees about us, God. Father, you never sleep, God. Father, you never slumber, God. We give you glory. We get ready to shift. I need you to ask for it. Father, now we ask that you send it now. That thing that you have wrote, God. We thank you, God, that you have given it to us, God. Father, we asking that you open up a portal from heaven, God, and pour out a blessing upon us, God. Father, now in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for your hand, God, that is covering us, God. 
I thank you, God, for your hand that is providing now, God. Everything that was written down, God, I thank you for it now, God. Every piece of paper now, God. Every iPad, God. Every visionary, God. Every business owner, God. Even now, God, for those that you have called off their job, God. I thank you, God, for the provision now, God. I thank you, God, for blessing them, God. I thank you, God, for taking them higher, God. I thank you, God. I thank you for the shift in this place, God. I thank you, God, for being able, God. I thank you, God, for being able to provide, God. I thank you, God, that in your word, God, you gave us miraculous signs, God. You gave us wonders, God, that we can look to, God, and we could know, God, that you are able, God. So, God, now I ask that you do it again, God. I ask that you perform now, God. I ask that you sing your glory now, God. I ask that you provide now, God. I thank you, God, that you are restored now God I thank you God that you are delivering now God I thank you God that you are healing now God I thank you God Yes, Lord. I thank you, God, for every request and every petition that's before you, God, that you are able to perform, God. Yes, Lord. Come on, I don't hear you praying. I don't hear you praying. That thing that you got in your head, I need you to pray for it like you need it to happen. I need you to pray for it now, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that every malice intent has to leave this place now, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that every form of unity come into this place now. I pray in the name of Jesus that every old habit die now in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus that you send us something new, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you send us something afresh. I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus that everything that we need, God, you supply, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that every enemy that tried to get in between us, God, that you get it now, God. Every bad seed, God, that has been planted, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you pluck it up, God, and put in a seed, God, that you want to be there. I pray in the name of Jesus. Everything that is lifted up to you now, God. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything that is lifted up to you now, God. I cover it with your blood, God. I cover it with your blood now, God. And I ask now, God, that you supply, God. Supply now, God. Come on, shout thank you. Come on, shout glory. Come on, shout hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, there it is. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, open your mouth and tell them yes. Open your mouth and tell them yes. Open your mouth and tell them yes. Come on, come on. I need somebody in here that'll tarry with me for just a second. Open your mouth and tell them yes. Tell them yes. Tell them yes, Lord. Tell them yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will, God. Yes to your way, God. Yes, we will obey, God. Yes, we will move, God. Yes, we will allow you to have our, your way, God. Yes, we will submit, God. We will submit to our wives, God. We will submit to our husbands, God. But most of all, God, we will submit to you, God. Most of all, God, we will submit to our leaders now, God. Yes, Lord. Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. You said knocking the door shall be open. We're knocking now, God. Hey, thank you, God. We ask for an overflow now, God. And God, I ask you for my personal prayer, God, that 11.15 acres be supplied now, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name that in the name that answers by fire. I pray now in the name of Jesus that you supply God. Because when you supply God, yes, Lord, none other can take it away. I thank you, God, that it is done. That it is done. And it is so. You said the kingdom suffered violent, but the violent take it by force, God. We've been in some violent situations, God, but we're ready to take it by force, God. 
And we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, that it is so. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The book of John. The book of John, the fifth chapter. The book of John, the fifth chapter. The book of John, the fifth chapter. Let's go there quickly. Let's go there quickly because I got to say this and then I got to sit down. I got to say this and then I got to sit down because there is an assignment of the Holy Ghost in this place. And there is something that the Holy Ghost wants to do that, that I can't do myself but only by the power of the Holy Ghost that is within me. So let's go there quickly. Let's go there quickly. The book of John, the book of John. It says, it says, and I'm reading, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you, God bless you. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Beth Bethesda, having five porches and in these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the move of the water. Uh, for an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there in he had an infirmity for 38 years when Jesus saw him laying there and knew that he had already been in that condition for a long time. He, he already knew that he had been there for a long time. He said to him, do you want to be made well? And I'm going to keep reading. I'm going to keep reading. The sick man answered to him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but... While I am coming, another steps down before me. Then Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. <laughs> yes, Lord. And that day was the Sabbath, so they're supposed to be resting. That day was the Sabbath. So the Jews therefore said to him, who has cured you it is the Sabbath. It's, it's, it's not lawful for you to, to carry your bed. It's, it's the Sabbath. You're supposed to be resting. You're not supposed to be doing this on the Sabbath. It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful <laughs> for you to carry your bed. He answered them, he who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. <laughs> then they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? And he said, but the one who was healed did not know who it was. For Jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple. He said to him, see, you have been made well. So what you need to do now is sin no more. And I'm paraphrasing here. Don't, don't take it for granted. Don't take me too serious, right? I'm paraphrasing. He said, sin no more, least a worse thing come upon you. And I'm going to end right here. I'm going to end right here. The man departed and he went back and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If I had to put a topic on this sermon is I'm walking in it. I'm walking. I'm walking in it. You can have your seat. You can have your seat. I'm walking in it. I'm walking in it. I'm walking. Y'all have to give a give me give me time, if you will. Just allow me a few more minutes to preach this. I am full. There's there's never been a Sunday where I've set a new direction and did not say a thing. There's never been a Sunday where I set a new direction, did not sing a song. And, and, and they kept me quiet, but I'm telling you, I was like a ticking time bomb over there ready to kick that organ over. So you have to give me a minute to release this to you. Just give me a minute to release this to you. Um, um, while I was preparing for this, 
the, the Lord had given me something. Actually, on the last fourth Sunday, he had given me something, and, and I was prepared with this text already, and I didn't know that Pastor would be doing the sermon series, Jaywalking. I didn't know that he would be doing that, and, and I, 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 when he did that on last week, I kind of gave First Lady a funny look because I'm like, he all in my sermon for next week, so I guess we all just going to go with it. But, but, but uh, what I had to do, I had to do all over the world, people are, even in, in 2019, people have been shouting, 2020 is going to be my year of vision. There were millions of people saying that this would be their year of vision. But, but what I want to do today is take a moment to ask, what does vision really do for us? What does vision really do for us? See, when you can see, it allows that lens that's, that's in your eyeballs, it allows that lens to send a signal to your brain that allows you to have control of your limbs and to have control of where you're going, what direction you need to walk in. It, it gives you control, and, and that signal allows you to do certain things that if you could not see, you would not be able to do. I'm sorry to tell you, but, but if you were ever in a position where you closed your eyes and you tried to catch a ball, you would be like me receiving a concussion on the baseball field. Because when I jumped in the, in, the, in, the, in the air and the sun got in my eyes, I couldn't see the ball anymore, and the ball hit me right in my head. Uh, and, and see, if you did not have vision, you would not be able to do certain things. And, and, and this text today, this text today, there was a man, some commentaries tell us that his infirmities had him to the point where he could not use his limbs. It did not tell us that he was blind, but it just said that he was laying there because he could not use his limbs. Now, now how is it that I have vision for 38 years? I know where I want to go. But I can't get there. Ah, Jesus. But, but in this text, there was a man that stopped by, and, and he came to see about this man, and he knew already what was going on. But before we get into the text, I need to go somewhere. I need to go somewhere, and I need to put, use another text to, to help you understand what it is that the Holy Ghost wants to do for you with your vision. Uh, if we go back to, to the Old Testament, there's books uh, by the name of Ezra and Nehemiah. They were written 70 years after the uh, Jews were freed from Babylon. They were written in that time. But, but if we look at these texts in context, we'll realize that... Uh, Ezra deals with the going back of building the temple. It goes back to building the temple. And, and this right here lets us know that when you are building the temple, you are building something that helps the spirit man. And, and when, when, because in their time when they had the temple, that was their opportunity to connect with God. Stay with me for just a second. That was their opportunity to connect with God. So Ezra allowed the people to be able to be fixed in their spirit. His name means helper. His, his name means helper. You are helping me to be able to deal with my spirit and fix my spirit that I may connect with God. And then after Ezra came, Nehemiah. Nehemiah had the, the, the opportunity to go back and build the walls of Jerusalem. He had the opportunity to go back and set precedence in government in Jerusalem. What are you telling me, preacher? In context, Nehemiah was dealing with the soul of the man. See, because the soul of the man deals with the government of the man. And it, it allows the man in his mind to be stable. And it allows the man in his emotions to be stable. What are you telling me? Nehemiah was helping us to fix our soul. What is the holy? What is his name means? It means comforter from God. Yeah, yeah. So, so as he is fixing you, God is being your comfort. He's keeping your mind and he's keeping your emotions intact. What is the Holy Ghost saying to you on today? The Holy Ghost is giving you these texts so that you can know he wants to fix your soul and he wants to fix your spirit so that you can have a mental and emotional sanctified stability. Uh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And the reason why I had you write that thing down that you wrote in your tablets and wrote in, in your phones is because that thing is what the Holy Ghost wants to give to you on today. He had just ministered to the Samaritan woman, and now he is walking towards Jerusalem. Now, I don't have a map, and so I don't know how far Samaria is from Jerusalem. Now, But Jesus is now walking from Samaria to Jerusalem, and it is on the Sabbath day where he is supposed to be resting. It's, it's the day that he is supposed to be resting. And I asked, I said, Jesus, why is it that you didn't go ahead and go into the city, but you stopped at the sheep gate? 
is it that you stop at the sheep gate? And he said, son, I need you to understand that all those people that were already in the city, they felt like they had it together. See, because in order to be in the feast that was going on, you had to be ceremonially clean. Let me preach this thing, Lord. You had to be ceremonially clean already. And Jesus said, I'm not worried about those people that I think they already got it together. See, I want to go down in the slums. I want to go down to those people that are vulnerable for me. Those people that will let, allow me to work in their lives. That's the people that I want to deal with. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He said, I don't need nobody that's high and mighty in this season. I need somebody that can, that can humbly submit to me and say, God, I got an issue. I need somebody that can come to me and say, Lord, I need you to fix this thing for me. It's been going on for too long. I need somebody that can submit their problems to me and allow me to fix it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So Jesus decided to stop at the sheep gate. What is the sheep gate, Reverend? What are you telling me? This is, this is, this is, this is a pool that was outside of the city. If, if, if you ever had to get a visual of it, there's a pool. It's not like the regular swimming pools that we have. You can uh -huh. you can picture a rectangle, uh -huh. right? There's a rectangle, if we're looking over the pool, with four sides, uh -huh. and then there's one in the middle that divides the pool. Uh -huh. And see, this sheep gate, they called it the sheep gate because it was the place where they would sell sheep to get ready for sacrifice. Uh -huh. And not only would they sell the sheep, but they would wash it in this pool uh -huh. to make sure that this pool, these sheep were ready for the sacrifice. Yeah. Right. They, they would wash it in these pools. And, and, and the Bible tells us there was a multitude of people uh -huh. uh, come on, come that on. were around this pool. Yeah. And they had all these infirmities and they needed to be clean and, and they were waiting they were waiting they were waiting for something to happen and they gave this pool the name Bethesda what does this yeah. mean Reverend what does this mean this is the house of mercy this is this is the house of mercy that word means the house of mercy see God had mercy on those sheep by allowing them to be washed yeah, yeah. because if you read deep into this Old Testament there was a certain type of sheep that would be allowed for the sacrifice yeah. Yeah. But he would allow these sheep to be washed in this pool and be, ah, uh, they were able come on, come on, come on. to be the sacrifice. Yeah. What are you telling me, Reverend? What are you telling me? See, see, this house of mercy is the same thing that's in here now. Yeah. yeah. We call this the war room on this morning, and you just don't know how much you were in my sermon saying yeah. that. Because this war room is the place where you can be washed clean. Yeah. This war room is the place where you can be made well for the sacrifice. Yeah. This war room is the place where God can truly use you. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. This place, this place that I told you that if you picture a rectangle with four sides and one dividing in the middle, this was the five porches that the text speaks about. Uh -huh. And it's not like the porch that's on your house, see. Well, it's similar to that, but it's not exactly the same way. See, this porch was a walkway that, uh -huh. that you could pass through. You can go all around the pool and, and, and see this, this, this walkway, it was dividing the middle of the pool. And uh -huh. some, some commentaries, when you study this, it says there was a twin pool. So, so what is this telling us? What is this telling us? All of these people are sitting here at the house of mercy, mercy which we call Bethesda, right? Uh -huh. And they have five porches, and the, the fifth one is dividing the twin pools. Uh -huh. So not only are we covered, uh -huh. yeah. but we have doubled the opportunity uh -huh. yeah. to receive. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Uh -huh. yeah. See, I thank God for all of you that were there on yesterday for I Love Me. Yeah. Because yesterday was the first pool. Come on. And today is the second pool. And you can receive double now because you made a sacrifice. Hey, thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm getting out your way. I know we're hungry. I know we got snack and chat coming up. All right, I'm going to get out your way. You can go ahead. You can go ahead and put my first point up there. Verse 5. Verse 5, it tells us, now a certain man was there who had an infirmity for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there, and he knew he had already been there for a long time. Jesus had knew it for a long He had been there. And he asked him, do you want to be made well? And I, 
I looked at this and, 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 and God said, hold this, my son. It's a choice. Hold this. It's a choice. See, see he could have easily walked up to him and say, you done already did time served sitting here. You, you, you've already been sitting here for 38 years. But see, now I'm getting ready to give you the opportunity to choose. <laughs> I need you to choose if you really want this. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, New D. How bad do you want that thing that you wrote down? I dare you to shout glory right now if you want it real bad. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. How bad do you want it? How bad? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? This man was laying there for 38 38 years, 38 years, 38 years, he was laying there. And Jesus comes to him now and asks him, how bad do you want it? See, see this was the Sabbath for Jesus as well, you know. He was, he, he was, he was supposed to be resting, but he asked this man, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? So now, now, he has flipped the script on him. He, he, at first, he responded by saying, sir. Sir, sir, uh, uh, and, and this confused me because I looked through all the different translations and I wondered if he would ever call Jesus by name. I wondered if he knew who he was messing with. I wondered if he knew the person that he was talking to. I wonder if any of you know the man that we are dealing with on today. My God, my God. Yes, Lord. He said, he said, sir. Sir, sir, I, 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 in, on the inside of me, I want to tell you, yes, I really want to be made well. Yeah. Deep down inside of me, I want to tell you that, but uh -huh. I, I don't really know you like that, man. I'm going to just be honest. And, and see, you see, through 38 years of this suffering, I can't trust everybody because these people that I've already asked to throw me in, they just jumped in and got what they needed and left me here. Uh, throughout 2019, I, I, I really can't trust you because I, I went through all this stuff and while I was in it, it didn't seem like you was going to bring me out. Th throughout all these years of my suffering, it didn't seem like you was going to do it. But, 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 but for some reason, you got me standing here in 2020. For some reason, you got me standing here declaring the word of the Lord. Can I help myself? For some reason, you got me standing here even when I wanted to die. You got me still here. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He said, sir, I have no man to put me in. And, and see, this was, this was a broken place for him right here. This was a broken place for this man because he had been here for all these years. And he couldn't trust nobody, not even the Son of God. Ah. Ah, he wanted to tell him, yes, but I don't know if I can tell you what I've been going through. I don't know if I can trust you with this, man, because you, you might just go and tell the next person. You might, just, you might just take my vision from me. This is all I got left. My vision is the only thing that I got. I can't really trust you right here. But see, what you have to understand is that you can't be whole and still be broken. See, this is the biggest oxymoron that the church carries. We've been carrying this since the days of Jesus. You cannot be whole and still be broken. I don't care how bad you get up here and eat by If you are still broken, you are not whole. Yes, Lord. And it's time out for you holding on to your brokenness. It's time out for you walking around with this broken thing trying to hide it and thinking you're going to mask it. The yeah. devil is a liar. Even the, even the unbelievers see your brokenness because you are allowing them to see it. I know this ain't no shouting message. I know this ain't no shouting message. But the Holy Ghost told me in order for me to do what you wrote down, you got to fix this. And if you don't fix it, you ain't going to get what you wrote down. And I stopped by to tell you today that for some of you, he want to do it today. But if you don't allow yourself to be fixed, you're going to keep going in your brokenness. I preached here not too long ago and I told you, if you if you seeking your reward here on earth, you'll get your reward. You'll get it. You'll get it. You'll get it. But when you deny that reward that's here on earth, you'll get a reward in heaven. That's the book right there. We can't argue with that one. Yes, Lord. Let's, let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. 
let's keep going. See, see, the book of Leviticus, we, we're going through the Bible project, and, and, and I, I, I got kind of stuck in the book of Leviticus because I was reading all the different types of sacrifices, all the different opportunities that God gave the Israel, people of Israel, to be able to fix what they were going through. That was the sin offering. That was the peace offering. That was the grain offering. That was et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. God gave multiple opportunities to sacrifice. And I had to ask myself, I said, Reverend, was it that there wasn't enough things to sacrifice? Or were they just not doing it? Because if you give me, I'm sorry, if you give me an opportunity to sacrifice clothes, I got plenty of clothes now. I'm, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a drip pastor. I'm, I, I, you know, I, I love to be swaggy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's just me. If I had to sacrifice clothes, I could do that. Yeah. But see, something that I don't have, I can't sacrifice. And yeah. see, God gave the opportunity for people to be able to sacrifice yes. what they had. Yeah. So I'm asking myself, is it that? There wasn't enough to sacrifice or what they just choosing not to do. It. And I need to tell you today, this is one of the quotes that I live by. If you don't choose to do it, you are inevitably choosing not to do it. <laughs> if you don't choose to fix your brokenness, you are inevitably choosing not to fix it. You are inevitably telling God. I don't even want to try, God. I don't even want to even look to do this because you are not making the choice to do it. You don't die. The Holy Ghost is going to get me in trouble. Ah, stop choosing to fix it for everybody else and not choosing to fix it for yourself. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ouch, Reverend. Ouch, Reverend. That's, that's, that hit me. That hit me. That hit me. That hit me. That hit me right there. Let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, what do we need? What do we need in order to get rid of this brokenness? It is a simple thing that we need. And, and, and when I was growing up, this was the type of ministry that we had. It was the deliverance ministry. It was a deliverance ministry. You need to be delivered. You need to be delivered. And we all need to be delivered at some point in our lives. And the, the Bible tells us in Romans 12, and I'm getting ready to go to my seat, I promise you. The Bible tells us in Romans 12, do not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I want to put a pin right there. I want to put a pin right there. Because one thing that we choose as a culture of people, one thing that we choose as a body of believers is to not renew our mind. We, we choose to not renew our mind, but true deliverance starts within the mind. Because see, one thing that I learned, if I learned anything about, about uh, cars, the, the motor controls everything that's going on. There, there's something that's, control, that's connected to the motor, and if that motor is not functioning, that car is not going to move. And it is the same thing with your mind. If your mind is not functioning correctly, uh, nothing else is going to move. And see, true deliverance starts with your mind. And then the act of deliverance comes after you get your mind together because your mind is your control center. Ah, Jesus. So how, 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 how do we, how do we receive this deliverance? There's a source that is needed. You need a source in the natural, but also a source in the spirit. Yeah, come on, come yeah. on. You need a source in the, to deal with the natural, but also a source to deal with the spirit. Come see, on, see, on. see, I can use Minister Hitchens as an example. She is a source for a lot of us, including Isaiah, in the spirit. She is a source that I can look and lean and depend on when I need that prayer, when I need something, when I need something in the spirit. I can look to her, but oftentimes there are things that I deal with as a man in the natural Amen. that I may have to go to Reverend Jackson for, I may have to go to Pastor for, yeah. because that's my source in the natural. Yeah. And see what you have to understand, the reason why you are forfeiting in the spirit is because you are continuing to go on without that source in the natural to help yeah. you to stay on the straight and narrow. Yeah. Yes, Lord. See, yeah. see, see, what you have to understand is you got to have that person that you can call and say, I'm getting ready to call on Tyrone and go over to his house. Come on. Yeah, and, and you need that person that can tell you, you better remember the last time you went over to Tyrone's house, you had yeah. to go to IJustGotHit.com. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Tell the truth, preacher. 
You need that person. Jesus. You need that person that you can lean on and be that can be accountable for you. You need that person that has already come out of that thing that you're struggling with. You need that person that has already been there and done that and got the t-shirt to prove it. You need that person. Because sometimes the person that is covering you in the spirit can't cover you in the natural because they don't need to know you on that level. Sometimes the person that is praying for you don't need to know all their dirt because if they know all their dirt, it's not going to help them to aid you in the spirit. See, there are things that we call internal disruptors. And I don't want to be knowing all this stuff about you certain times when I'm praying for you because I may miss God praying for the wrong thing when God is having me cover you for something different. You need that source that you can create that balance. And what are you saying? What are you saying? So I know sometimes it may seem like you may have a conflict of interest. But if that person in the natural is pulling you deeper to the natural and not pulling you deeper to where you need to be, that's not the person that you need in the natural. Yes, Lord. You, you, you keep it. Make sure your people are saved now. That's just the disclaimer. If they're going to help you in the natural, make sure they're saved. That's right. Cause see, 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 you can't get somebody that's on the seesaw, and every time you go down, they go up. And every time they go down, you go up. That ain't the person you need. Yeah, yeah. You don't need that person to say, I know it's hard, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go by specs and get a bottle of hen, and I'm going to make sure that we get through. That ain't the person you need. Yeah. That ain't the person you need. See, see, I can give that example because when I was in college, I had certain friends, they thought we could just smoke our troubles away. <laughs> but that wasn't the person that I needed to be accountable for me. That ain't the person that I needed. That wasn't the person that I needed. You got to make sure you're analyzing your surroundings because, see, this text, it it lets us know there was a multitude of people around this man. But what source did he have? What source did he have to help him get where he needed to be? I'm getting out your way. I'm getting out your way. I'm getting out your way. I'm going to get. The last thing I need to tell you about deliverance, you need to recognize your triggers. You need to recognize your triggers. You need to recognize those things that push your buttons. You need to recognize those things that cause you to act out of character. Come on. If you got to write it down, write it down. Yeah. If you got to go back to your childhood, one of the best things that I ever did yeah. was took a tablet. And the, on the first page, there's nothing else in this tablet but the things that happened to me throughout my life. And through that, I was able to recognize, okay, this is why I'm angry like a rock waller when somebody does this to me. This is why I shut down when my wife comes to me and she wants to tell me how, what I'm doing wrong. This is, what, this is why I do this. This is why I do that. Sometimes you have to recognize your triggers. Because, see, if you don't know your triggers, you're just walking around doing what you want to do. And see, even in the kingdom, without knowing your triggers, you will allow the new people that are coming to come in and uh, they are pushing your buttons. And now you have hurt somebody that didn't really need to be hurt because you didn't know what your trigger was. See, because I can recognize my trigger from that door. And if my trigger is coming through that door, I'm getting ready to go over here. Because wisdom says I have to make sure that my spirit man is right. I have to make sure that I uphold righteousness no matter what is going on. I don't care if I don't like what they're doing. I have to uphold righteousness. Because if God decides to take me out of here right now, he's not going to ask me what they did. But he's going to ask me how I respond. Yes, Lord. Yeah. We're going to walk in this. We're going to walk in this. Yeah. You can put my next point up there. You that's must good. trust in the Lord wholeheartedly. Oh, that's good. Trust in the Lord wholeheartedly. I was having a conversation with my father on yesterday. We were, we were getting ready to come here for the I Love Me conference. And I asked him, I said, Dad, what, what you know about the Gospels? And, and he began to tell me, you know, the Gospels tells you about all the disciples. And it gives you an account of what they've seen. And they all were flawed. They all had something that they were dealing with. And, and see, the thing about this is that he pointed out his favorite disciple was Peter. His favorite disciple was Peter because Peter had a heart. He had a heart for God. He, he loved God with everything that he had. And, and, and he, he had the opportunity to step out on the water. He said, God, if Jesus, if that's you, let me come out there. Now, the thing is, he said, if that's you. He, didn't, he wasn't sure 
that it was him. But he said, if it is you, I'm going to trust you enough to step out here. Ooh, Jesus, see what we have to do with that thing that you wrote down. You have to have enough courage to trust in him, to step out wholeheartedly, not wavering. Ah, here it is, here it is. Pastor preached about the, 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 the story where the man was, um, his daughter had died, and he only took, Jesus only took three disciples in there. And, and, and the thing that blessed me was Judas was outside. Because, because Peter had fear when he was walking on the water, and that's why he fell. Yeah. But he had a heart for God. Yeah. See, Judas was bold, but he did not have the heart for God. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, Jesus. And what you have to understand is that if you're going to be bold, but you're not going to have a heart for God, you need to get away from what you got going on. You need to step back. You need to step back. But, but, but what God is causing, he's calling all of us to do is trust in him yes. with all our heart. Because we have a heart for him. I believe that everybody in there has a heart for him. Yes. And I believe that you are able to do exactly what is needed. I believe you are able to do exactly what is needed. And, and the thing that I like about this, this man, he, after he said, sir, I have no man to put me in the pool. Uh -huh. Jesus immediately said, rise up, take up your bed. And walk. Yes. Come on, yes. And I was waiting in the in the next scripture for him to to allow more doubt to come and say, "Well, I've been I've been here all these years. How am I going to get up and walk?" But the next scripture says, "And that day, the man took up his bed and he walked." It says that this man immediately got up and started walking. Now, after 38 years, Come on. Ah, Come on. Come on. after 38 years of this suffering, after, after all this time of laying here, this man that I barely even know because I can't even call him by name tells me to get up and walk. And, and see, this right here is a level of trust that you got to have because the Holy Spirit is telling you right now, take up your bed and walk. I know it may have seemed like you wasn't going to make it out. I hear the voice of the Lord. But you just need to get up and walk. Somebody tell your neighbor, get up and walk. Get up and walk. Get up and walk. Get up and walk. You have to trust in the Lord wholeheartedly. The last thing I need you to do before I go is disconnect from doubt completely. Disconnect from doubt completely because this man received this miracle as some of us are getting ready to see on today and some of us are getting ready to see within the next month this man received his miracle but then when people yeah. started to ask him huh? who healed you yeah. <laughs> they already knew who was who was, they had already gotten word who was healing Come people on. but Come they on. just needed to know oh, who healed you yeah. <laughs> and this man he said I don't know I don't quite know who healed me and he said this un until Jesus came back to him and told him, sin no more unless something worse come upon you. And, 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 and see, the thing that I like about this is that Jesus is telling us, even after you receive your miracle, you need to disconnect from that doubt. Because those people that are asking you, how did that happen? Now, Reverend, you were ready to kill yourself in 2019. Yeah. But in 2020, you are receiving the... Uh, how did this happen? How, how is it that this happened? Because this man can't be the son of God. We yeah. don't believe that he is the son of God. But yeah. see, what this man messed up was he departed and went back and told the Jews uh -huh. who had healed them. Yeah. And if you keep reading in this, and I, I believe that we're going to get to this when, when, when we continue on in this sermon series... If you continue reading, you'll realize that the man that he told them that healed him, they started plotting to kill him. So now, now I have shared with you my source. And now you're trying to take it away from me. Ooh, Jesus. See, so you have to be careful with the doubt that you are connected to because that doubt that you are constantly connecting to and constantly going back to, it may be trying to take your source away from you. But I stopped by to tell you on today, <laughs> that man, yes, Lord, that man that healed him and then allowed them to kill him. 
Yes, yes. <laughs> yes Lord, yes, Lord. Yeah. He allowed them to kill him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He rose again with all power yeah. Yeah. in his hand. I, yeah. I, I'm not going there because I know, yeah. I know that I can go there. Yeah. But that man rose up again. Yes, he did. And he's still able to do it. Yes, he is. My question to you once again, how bad do you want? God bless you and I love you.